ever wondered why some computer programs run lightning fast while others feel sluggish? Or how computers and algorithms tackle complex problems? It all boils down to time and space complexity. It's a fundamental concept in computer science that helps us understand how efficiently algorithms can solve tasks. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on time and space complexity by IntelliPath. So why is all this important? Well, understanding time and space complexity allows us to evaluate and compare different algorithms. We can identify which ones are more efficient, faster and use fewer resources. This knowledge helps us design better algorithms and solve problems faster and optimize our code. So if you're intrigued by the inner workings of algorithms and want to dive into the realm of time and space complexity, stay till the end to learn everything related to it. By the end, you'll be equipped with the knowledge to optimize your code and create efficient programs. With that, let us take a look at the agenda for this video. First, we'll talk about introduction to time and space complexity. Then we'll move on to what is time complexity. Then we'll look at some of the common classes. After that, we'll talk about analyzing time complexity. Moving on, we'll talk about what is space complexity. And we'll look at the relationship between time and space complexity. After that, we'll talk about some practical examples. And with that, we'll conclude. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us. We'll begin with introduction to time and space complexity. Algorithm analysis is a crucial aspect of computer science and programming. It involves understanding and evaluating the efficiency and performance of algorithms. One key aspect of algorithm analysis is measuring the time and space complexity of an algorithm. Time complexity refers to the amount of time an algorithm takes to run, while space complexity refers to the amount of memory or space required by an algorithm. To express the efficiency of algorithms, we use Big O notation. Big O notation represents the upper bound or worst case scenario of an algorithm's time or space complexity. It simplifies the analysis by focusing on the most significant factors that affect an algorithm's performance, ignoring constant factors and lower order terms. Now we'll look at what exactly is time complexity. Time complexity is a fundamental concept in algorithm analysis that measures the amount of time required by an algorithm to run as the input size increases. It provides an estimation of the efficiency and scalability of an algorithm. In algorithm analysis, time complexity answers the question, how does the runtime of an algorithm grow as the input size grows? It helps us understand how the algorithm's performance will scale when dealing with larger inputs. By analyzing time complexity, we can compare different algorithms and determine which one is more efficient for solving a particular problem. Time complexity is typically represented using Big O notation, which provides an upper bound or worst case scenario of the algorithm's time complexity. It focuses on the dominant or most significant term in the algorithm's runtime and ignores constant factors and lower order terms. Different factors affect the time complexity of an algorithm. These factors can include number of input elements, the number of iterations or recursive calls, the operations performed, and the data structures used. Now we'll take a look at common time complexity classes. Time complexity classes categorize algorithms based on their growth rates as the input size increases. These classes provide a standard way to compare and analyze the efficiency of algorithms. Here are some of the commonly encountered time complexity classes. First is constant time, which is big O of one complexity. Algorithms with constant time complexity have a constant runtime regardless of the input size. These algorithms perform a fixed number of operations, making them highly efficient. Examples include accessing an element in an array by index, performing basic arithmetic operations, or retrieving a value from a hash table. Next is logarithmic time, which is big O of log n time complexity. Algorithms with logarithmic time complexity exhibit runtime that grows logarithmically with improved size. These algorithms typically divide the problem into smaller subproblems and operate on a subset of the input in each step. Binary search is a classic example of an algorithm with logarithmic time complexity. Next is linear time with big O of n complexity. Algorithms with linear time complexity have a runtime directly proportional to the input size. These algorithms perform a constant amount of work for each input element. Examples include iterating over an array or list, summing all elements, or searching for a specific element in an unsorted list. Moving on, linear rhythmic time, which is big O of n log n complexity. 
Algorithms with linear rhythmic time complexity have a runtime that is a product of the input size and its logarithm. These algorithms often involve divide and conquer strategies such as merge sort and quick sort. Many efficient sorting algorithms fall into this category. Next on the list is quadratic time, which is big O of n square complexity. Algorithms with quadratic time complexity have a runtime that grows exponentially with the input size. These algorithms typically involve nested iterations. Examples include selection sort and bubble sort, where each element needs to be compared with every other element. Next is exponential time, which is big O of 2 power n complexity. Algorithms with exponential time complexity have a runtime that grows exponentially with the input size. These algorithms are highly inefficient and are generally impractical for larger inputs. The famous brute force approach, which exhaustively tries every possible solution, often falls into this category. Finally, factorial time, which is big O of n factorial time complexity. Algorithms with factorial time complexity have a runtime that grows factorially with the input size. These algorithms are highly inefficient and typically arise in problems involving permutations or combinational calculations. They are generally infeasible for even moderately sized inputs. Now we'll look at analyzing time complexity. Analyzing time complexity of an algorithm allows us to understand how the runtime of the algorithm grows as the input size increases. By determining the time complexity, we can assess the efficiency and scalability of an algorithm. Here are some common techniques for analyzing time complexity. First is iterative analysis. In iterative analysis, we examine the number of operations performed in each iteration of a loop. We count the statements or operations that are executed a fixed number of times, regardless of the input size. By analyzing the number of iterations and the cost of each iteration, we can determine the overall time complexity of the algorithm. It is important to consider the dominant or most significant term in the iteration count when determining the time complexity. Next is recursive analysis. Recursive algorithms call themselves with smaller subproblems. Analyzing the time complexity of a recursive algorithm involves understanding the number of recursive calls and the work done at each level of recursion. By defining a recurrence relation, which expresses the time complexity in terms of the input size and the time complexity of smaller instances, we can solve the overall time complexity. Techniques such as tree recursion and memoization can be used to optimize the time complexity of recursive algorithms. And finally, solving recurrence relations. Many algorithms have a recursive or divide and conquer structure, resulting in recurrence relations that describe the time complexity. Solving these recurrence relations involves finding a closed form solution that expresses the time complexity in terms of the input size. Techniques such as substitution, iteration, and the master theorem can be used to solve recurrence relations and determine time complexity. Solving recurrence relations is particularly useful for algorithms like merge sort, quick sort, and binary search. Now let's talk about what is space complexity. Space complexity refers to the amount of memory or space required by an algorithm to solve a problem as the input size increases. It measures the efficiency of memory utilization by an algorithm and is an important aspect of algorithm analysis. In algorithm analysis, space complexity answers the question, how much memory does an algorithm require as the input size grows? It helps us understand the memory requirements and scalability of algorithms. By analyzing space complexity, we can compare different algorithms and determine which one is more efficient in terms of memory usage. Space complexity takes into account various factors that contribute to memory consumption. These factors include the memory used by variables, data structures, program instructions, and any auxiliary space needed. The amount of memory required may increase with the input size, the choice of data structures, the number of variables, and the presence of recurrence calls in the algorithm. Space complexity is typically expressed using big O notation. Big O notation provides an upper bound or worst case scenario of the algorithm space complexity. It simplifies the analysis by focusing on the most significant factors that affect memory usage while ignoring constant factors and lower order terms. Now let's talk about the relationship between time and space complexity. Time and space complexity are two important aspects of algorithm analysis that provide insights into the efficiency and resource utilization of algorithms. While they are distinct measures, there is often a trade-off between time and space complexity. Here are some key points regarding the relationship between time and space complexity. 
So let's talk about trade-off. In many cases, improving the time complexity of an algorithm may result in increased space complexity and vice versa. This trade-off arises from the different operations and data structures used to optimize for time and space efficiency. Next is time-space complexity spectrum. Algorithms can exist at different points along a spectrum of time-space complexity. At one extreme, there are algorithms that prioritize time efficiency, often requiring more memory or space to achieve faster execution. At the other extreme, there are algorithms that prioritize space efficiency using less memory but potentially sacrificing speed. Next is optimization strategies. Choosing between time and space optimization depends on the requirements of the problem at hand. Some problems may prioritize faster execution, while others may prioritize efficient memory usage. Algorithm designers must consider the specific constraints and objectives to determine the optimal balance between time and space complexity. Fourth is algorithmic techniques. Certain algorithmic techniques inherently exhibit trade-offs between time and space complexity. For example, using dynamic programming can reduce time complexity by storing intermediate results in memory which thereby increases space complexity, whereas using a brute force approach may have lower space complexity but higher time complexity. Fifth is problem-specific considerations. The choice between time and space optimization depends on the characteristics of the problem being solved. Some problems may have stringent memory constraints, making space optimization critical. Others may have time-sensitive requirements necessitating time optimization. Understanding the problem domain is crucial in making informed decisions about time-space trade-offs. Next on the list is performance analysis. When evaluating algorithms, it is important to consider both time and space complexity together. A thorough analysis of the trade-off allows for a comprehensive understanding of an algorithm's overall efficiency and resource requirements. And finally, balancing factors. It is worth noting that there is no universal rule for determining the ideal trade-off between time and space complexity. The optimal balance depends on the specific problem, available resources, and performance requirements. Often, a balance must be struck between the two based on specific needs of the application or system. Now let's look at some practical examples. First is sorting algorithms. Sorting algorithms are a classic example of analyzing and comparing time complexity. Algorithms like bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort have a time complexity of big O of n square as they involve nested loops. In contrast, more efficient solving algorithms like merge sort and quick sort have a time complexity of big O of n log n. By analyzing the time complexity, we can choose the most efficient sorting algorithm based on the size of the input. Additionally, analyzing space complexity is crucial when working with large data sets. In place storing algorithms like quick sort have a space complexity of big O of log n as they only require a small amount of auxiliary memory. On the other hand, algorithms like merge sort have a space complexity of big O of n as they require additional memory to merge subarrays. Understanding the space complexity helps in selecting the appropriate sorting algorithm based on the available memory resources. Moving on, let's talk about graph traversal. Graph traversal algorithms such as breadth-first search and depth-first search are widely used in graph-related problems. Analyzing the time complexity of these algorithms helps us understand their efficiency. BFS and DFS have a time complexity of big O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. By analyzing the time complexity, we can determine the scalability of these algorithms for different graph sizes. In terms of space complexity, BFS typically requires a queue to store visited nodes, resulting in a space complexity of big O of V as it visits each vertex once. DFS, on the other hand, uses a stack or recursion to store visited nodes, resulting in a space complexity of big O of V for a recursive implementation. Understanding the space complexity is important when dealing with large graphs or limited memory resources. Now let's talk about dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is a technique used to solve complex problems by breaking them down into overlapping subproblems and storing their solutions to avoid redundant computations. Analyzing the time complexity of dynamic programming algorithms helps us understand the computational efficiency. For example, the Fibonacci sequence can be calculated using dynamic programming. 
The naive recursive approach has an exponential time complexity of big O of 2 power n as it recomputes the same Fibonacci sequence multiple times. However, by using dynamic programming with memoization, the time complexity reduces to big O of n as each Fibonacci number is calculated only once and stored for future reference. In terms of space complexity, dynamic programming algorithms often use additional memory to store solutions to subproblems. For the Fibonacci sequence example, the space complexity with memoization is big O of n as it requires an array to store the computed values. Analyzing the space complexity helps us understand the memory requirements and optimize the use of auxiliary space. So in conclusion, understanding time and space complexity is essential for analyzing and optimizing the efficiency of algorithms. Time complexity helps us evaluate the computational efficiency of an algorithm by measuring the growth rate of its execution time with respect to the input size. In practical terms, complexity analysis and optimization are crucial in various domains such as sorting algorithms, graph traversal, dynamic programming, and many more. By applying best practices, we can design algorithms that meet the performance requirements of real-world applications. By employing these concepts, developers and researchers can make informed decisions, improve algorithm performance, and create more efficient solutions for a wide range of problems. So with that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers advanced certification in data science and AI in collaboration with iHub Divya Samparka, IIT Roorkee. Through this course, you can learn all the important concepts of data science and AI from esteemed IIT Roorkee faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in field of data science and AI.